accepting the award in the protest. And in March says, we are beautiful, we are strong, we are beautiful, we are powerful, but the most important, we are rooted! We are rooted! We are rooted! Rooted deeply as our olive trees in Palestine! And nobody will take this from us! Nobody will take this from us!
Francis. And, what, and then it was a military strategy. The military strategy was indiscriminate, unproportional bombardment until the people will yield. They have committed these massacres before. We have talked about this. We have, we have on and off provided evidence of this. The Goldstein Report, the People's Tribunals, countless, countless resolutions. And yet, I stand here before you again, and as Batman said, for the third, fourth, and now even the fifth generation is being massacred because we have denied the existence of the Palestinian people. This is the 106th anniversary of the Belfort Declaration, when this country promised the Zionist organization that we will give you that land that is not ours, that we will help you in the project to completely forget that there are humans that exist there. That is where this heartbreak has started. On and on again, genocide, massacres, and we hear stuff. I, I, I give up. I give up on UN resolutions. I give up on the International Court of Justice. I give up on going again and again and again to the UN, where the biggest power comes from the Security Council, where there are still vetoes, where we can still not give voices to the people. <laughs> Yesterday, I was, as I was struggling with what yet again trying to write, trying to ask different platforms, can you please voice our opinions? Can we please not again fall into the evidence of A and B, the proportionality of A and B? The language of international law itself is politicized. The mechanisms are politicized. And if history can show us is that they have only worked in the service of one side. The only time when we come and tell you there's an unfolding genocide, you come and tell me, perhaps, maybe, no. Yesterday, as I was writing these words, they bombed three ambulances. The door of the Shiva Hospital, the door of the Indonesian Hospital. As I stand and look at that footage, I have people coming at me at the UN, but yes, but we question your footage. Why do we question your footage? Because it came from an Arab body. Because it came from someone that we will not trust the voice of. We need the validation of our allies and to have our voices heard. When I was struggling in that, I, I came across and I remembered a poem that came out from Rafiz Ziyadeh a few years ago. So I will end with that poem. Rafiz Ziyadeh was a journalist who was working in Gaza during the bombardment of 2008. And with that, she was trying to do something akin to what I was trying to say. She was trying to convey to the world, yet again, that these numbers are human, that we are being denied our existence over and over again, and that we are sick of it. She said, today, my body was, TV, uh, t was a TV massacre. Today, my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits. Today, my body was a TV massacre that had to fit into sound bites and word limits filled enough with statistics to counter a measured response. And I perfected my English, and I learned my UN resolutions. But still, he asked me, Ms. Ziyade, don't you think that everything would be resolved if you just stop teaching so much hatred to your children? Pause. I look inside of me for strength to be patient. But patience is not at the tip of my tongue as the bombs drop over Gaza. Patience has escaped me. Pause. Smile. We teach life, sir. Rafis, remember to smile. Pause. We teach life, sir. We Palestinians teach life after they have occupied the last sky. We teach life after have they built their after they built their settlements and appetite walls. After the last sky, we teach life, sir. I stand today in front of you with the utmost respect and wonder and awe at the resilience of the people in Gaza. They have shown utmost resilience on top of trauma that none of us would be able to take on. These people are still able to sing, are still able to live, and they're just begging the world, let Gaza live! Let Gaza live! Let Gaza live! Let Gaza live!
don't look at this illegality in its eye. The only way forward is that for that blood not to yet again have gone in waste. This is the biggest massacre we've seen since the Nakba. We are talking about over 10,000 lives. We are talking about the generation destroyed. This cannot go into waste. We need to mobilize. We need to make this hurt that we as a humanity will not stand for this to happen again. Write to your MPs. Make your voice heard. Learn as much as you can. Talk within your communities. Find what are the circles of influence that you can have as a person. There are resources there in abundance. Amplify the voices of your colleagues and listen to us. Because for the longest time ever, we've had to deal with this grief by ourselves. And one of the only things that allow us to teach life, that allow us to keep on moving forward, is if we know that we have our allies, that we're being heard. The biggest thing that we can do to Palestine now is to see it, is to look at Palestinian voices and tell them, even though history has tried to deny you your voice, we see you. Palestine, we see you. Jewish people and many other 
Why is that happening? Why is there no happiness? I wish Palestine will be a place always happy and safe. Thank you. Stop the killing. Gaza is bleeding. She's bleeding dying children. She's bleeding mother's tears. Where is the leniency? Let's overcome the inhumanity. Let's live with mercy. Let's have a life without brutality. Now we know the truth. We know the fake peace. We know the lies that the devil tries to smooth. We will fight for peace. Peace is what we are looking for. Peace screams and rolls with every breath. Peace is the world's cure. Peace is our desire on earth. So now, before we go in, because as we mentioned before, uh, we are not uh, numbers, we are names, and we have history and the future and present. Uh, we want to ask you now, before we read the, the names of the children, some of, some of the children who have been massacred and killed by the Israeli in Gaza, we want you for one minute to have one minute of silence and one minute of reflection, and to ask yourself in just one minute, what you can do to stop this genocide. It's a critical moment in our history and our humanity. One minute silence and reflection. Maybe prayer, but they don't need our prayer, unfortunately, you know. Thank you. One minute silence. for this one minute and reflection and now we will be starting by with Dania. Dania will be reading the 15 names and age uh, of children who have been killed in Gaza, Palestinian children and Palestinian human beings. And all of the girls are Syrians as well, so it's not about Palestine, it's about our humanity. Jamal Musa is one years old. 
محمد جواد حسني موسى كفاي لارا احمد لارا احمد سمير ابو سماله هسوي عبد عبد الرحمن ايمن سمير ابو شماله السبل ليان محمد صلاح العبدالله السرتين ميلانا ايمن سمير موسى شسوي جنان ولي جهاد محمد المصري السرتين يزول ابيلان محمد كمال حماد يزول ديما جهاد احمد اواد السبنتين عبد العزيز كمال منصور صبح سيرزول آدم أحمد سعيد رضوان فايز حور حور حسام فوزي البواب شسوي كنجا أيمن جميل أبو أبو الجلال شسوي ماريا أحمد علي هيز ون يوز أول راما أشرف تيجير الحرباوي توبي يزول حمزة وائل أحمد الأصل أي في يزول لما أحمد محمود حسونة تركين يزول علي محمد علي حسونة سبن يزول سارة بلان محمد حسونة في يزول صبحي حمدا صبحي حسونة ون يزول سارة بلان محمد حسونة في يزول آدم حسام موسى ركان حسام حسين موسى 
مصر مصر محمود ابراهيم حجازي احمد محمد امين نوفل بن الزن اوف نبيلا اي دونت نو ميبي هي ستيل انفونت ذيس ومن هير تشايلد واز ان هير بيبي سو هي دوزنت هاف ا نيم سو زي مانشن ذات زي هي ذا سون اوف نبيلا نصر محمد نوفل سو ستيل ان هير ان هير وانت انفورتشنتلي معاذ معاذ هاني محمد العيدي هيز ا بوي اند دايس علي نبيل العيدي از ا ميل بوي از يو سي موست اوف ذيس تشيلدرن ار فروم ون فاميلي اند لايك مور فروم سافين تو سيكس فاميليز ار هاف بين وايد اوف باي ذا اسرائيلي سلاوترز اند مافاكرز بيفور وي فينيش وي وي جانا اكشولي شي ستارتد Shahid started reading the poem of We Teach Palestine, uh, We Teach Life, actually, Palestinians teach life. But I would like to tell, uh, before I read the poem uh, and we, uh, we close, I don't know if you, you have ever uh, know the meaning of Gaza. Ga- the meaning of, have you Googled the meaning of Gaza? Because we speak about Gaza, but we don't know the meaning. The meaning of Gaza refers back to the, uh, to, the thematic, uh, to the thematic language, and it means being strong. No wonder, right? No wonder, being, being strong, the meaning of Gaza. No wonder Palestinians in Gaza are not only strong, powerful. And then our pioneer Palestinian uh, poet Mahmoud Darwish, he once said, and all Palestinians, by the way, love this, على هذه الأرض ما يستحق الحياة. On this earth, uh, there is what deserves life. And one of the most beautiful uh, prayers, if you have any Palestinian friends, And he wants to pray for you. We say Yisad Kalbar, which means May Allah bring happiness to your heart. Palestinian people are happy people. They like happiness. They would like to be happy. They would like to live their life. But unfortunately, under the occupation, they are not able to do that. I will say as a Palestinian to all of you, Yisad Kalbar, May Allah bring happiness to your heart from each one of the Palestinians in Gaza. Please remember this beautiful prayer that all the people in Gaza say, Yisad Khalba. And I will read the poem before we leave. We teach la- <laughs> What's the poem? I will read final because it's raining. I will read the last part of the poem. Because uh, Shahid started by the, the by the first part, um, and I do believe that Palestinians teach life. Actually, uh, we teach life fair. We teach life after they have built their settlements and apartheid walls after the last sky. We teach life fair. But today, my body was a TV massacre made to fit into sound bites and word limits. And just give us a story, a human story. And just give us a story, a human story. You see, this is not political. You see, this is not political. We just want to tell people about you and your people. So give us a human story. We just want to tell people about you and your people. So give us a human story. Don't mention that word apartheid and occupation. This is not political. Don't mention that word apartheid and occupation. This is not political. You have to help me as a journalist to help you tell your story, which is not a political story. Today, my body was a TV massacre. Today and every day in Palestine, West Bank, Jerusalem, and Gaza, our bodies as Palestinians are a TV massacre. How about you? Give us a story of a woman in Gaza who needs medication. How about you? Give us a story of a woman in Gaza who needs medication. How about you? Do you have enough bone broken limbs to cover the sun? Hand me over your, ha- your dust and give me the list of their names in 1,200 word limits. Hand me over your dust and give me the list of their names in 1,200 word limits. We 
because you've heard from two amazing Palestinian women who've given testimony, which I couldn't do. And they are the reason why Israel is not going to win. They are the reason why Palestinians will never be defeated. You've heard their voices. So I just want to talk briefly about what you can do and what's going on in this country. That woman, Suella Braverman, calls these hate marches. I've never known so much hate come out of one person. Today she hates the homeless. She always hates refugees and migrants, and she no doubt hates Palestinians as well. She says we should not talk about from the river to the sea. The threat from the river to the sea is Israel. Israel are the ones who are trying to kill, bomb, and maim Palestinians from the river to the sea. They have illegally occupied Palestinian land from the river to the sea. They want to eliminate Palestinians from the river to the sea. She is talking about the wrong people. The threat is Israel, not people chanting on peaceful marches. So some of you will know that um, 
I'm still in the Labour Party. I've been in the Labour Party for 50 years. I've never been so ashamed about what our leader has been saying and not doing. The Labour Party ought to be shouting loud for a ceasefire now. It isn't just a plea for a humanitarian pause. It's us saying what Israel is doing is wrong. They want to eliminate the Palestinians from their land. And if we can't call for a ceasefire, what we're saying is the death of thousands and thousands of Palestinians is right. We're saying that Israel's war strategy is right. We're sitting back and allowing them to carry on with the genocide which they're taking place. And the role of political parties in this country should be saying that is wrong and not in our name. And particularly of a Labour Party that once claimed to be a democratic socialist party and one that is meant to be the opposition, not kowtowing to what Israel is telling them to do. So I've got two things I want to, three things actually, I want to ask you to do. First is join the local PSC, Palestine Solidarity campaign. It's growing, but it needs to get bigger. We can organise more and more marches and events. We need your help to make sure that happens. Secondly, they say that uh, there are hate marches and they're criticising uh, us for being uh, out on the 11th next Saturday. There have been hundreds of thousands on the last three marches, 500,000 on the last one. My request to you is let's go for a million. Let's try and help a million people. So you can take your friends, you can go and talk in your pubs and in your families, and let's get up there and make sure that the whole of this country uh, knows what the support is. And it isn't just let to try and make the media report. Last week the media said there were 75 people here. They might think there's at least 100, this week, who knows? Uh, but let's try and make sure people actually listen. But the people who watch are the Palestinians. I remember when I was allowed to go to Palestine, they knew where we'd been. They watch the demonstrations, they see Whitehall being packed, they see the thousands and thousands of Palestinian flags. That makes them know that there are people around the world who are on their side when they're being bombed and killed. So let's make sure we make that the biggest ever march for, for Palestine next Saturday in London. Be there and bring your friends and be other people. And the last thing I want to say, oh, okay, not just be there, 12 o'clock at Hyde Park, march into the US em Embassy and Nine Elms. Uh, in London. 12 o'clock, London, Hyde Park, next week, be there. And the last thing is the political parties in this country. They are a disgrace at the moment, but they are the voice that we need to try and tackle. It's no good just, just demonstrating we need to change the politics of this country so that actually we are supporting Palestine. We cause the problem, we need to be part of the solution, not actually part of the problem. So in your world, in your union, in your school, in your workplace, in your church, in your constituency, raise the voice of Palestine, talk about Palestine, and make sure their voice is heard uh, across everywhere where you have contact. You've heard brilliant testimony from really amazing Palestinian women. Let's not let that go to waste. Let's make sure that we organise, fight, and then there will be a free Palestine. Free, free! Free, free! See you next Saturday!
Thank you. 